So we're at a site that means uh, so much to me. And after you watched uh, what Cody and his family did on their piece of property reference rough grouse management from all the cutting and herbicide applications showing, you know, they sh we, we showed you what could be when it comes to rough grouse management. But this site right here, this is a, a site that, um, there's not many grouse in the state of Ohio anymore, and that's where we're at. And this is a county that traditionally in the past was just floated with rough grouse, but not anymore. But there is this pocket on one of my clients' place that still has some remnants of grouse. And I was turkey hunting one day, two years ago, and had a horrible hunt, but decided to go, hey, let's go do some mushroom hunting. And um, while I was mushroom hunting, I actually heard several grouse drum. And I thought to myself, hey, how about we try to figure out where their log is and put set up a deer camera and actually by luck i stumbled on one of the logs set up the deer camera and i'm telling you what it was absolutely amazing checking that deer camera card and there was an actual grouse on there drumming it was absolutely phenomenal but then fast forward to this year you know hanging out with cody and casey and blake hagemeyer um, you know, you could always do more, always get it on film. So Cody and I come up with a plan is, you know, we set up a blind and about 10 yards away and I got in it an opening day of turkey season and spent two and a half hours of actually getting a grouse on this log right here that I'm sitting on. And he was just drumming away. And it was, I, it was so, it was such an emotional thing for me. Number one, that I accomplished it. Number two is that I was watching, and I'm being a little dramatic here, but I was watching a dinosaur do its thing. And um, yeah, it, it's just like, after you, after you watch this, uh, not by a film, but just actually view this and set up a blind, I wish everybody that was into wildlife management, especially those individuals that are you know, concentrate on just like one or two species were to sit in a blind and actually view and see the thing that I seen um, or saw. It, it is, it just cuts right through you. You want to do more. You, you wonder why, you question like, why is this like this? It, it's like this is, we know more about wildlife management than ever before. It's at our fingertips. And yet we have a species that once flourished through good forest management, it's suffering. But that's beside the point. So that leads us to what I'm sitting on today, which is a rough grouse drum and log. Now, a lot of people have heard that terminology, but what actually is a drum and log? Well, a drum and log is actually just a log that's laying on the ground and it has a lot of it's, it's, it's not so much the log, it's the habitat that creates this drum and log site. And if you can see, you know, there's a lot of cover surrounding this log that I'm sitting on. It's actually shading out the sun. There's a lot of horizontal, high stem density cover. And that is very important when it comes to creating these drum and log sites on your property or other properties. And that is for like avian predators, predators. Because when they're on these logs doing their mating uh, ritual, they don't need to be worried about, you know, <laughs> a hawk coming in and swooping them up. So it's all about the quality of habitat that you surround this log, okay? So it's a lot of horizontal, a lot of high stem, stem density. And when you're sitting here you look around and it, it's just cover, 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 cover. There's no way a hawk can get in here, per se, and uh, nail it. So, but these logs are quite simple to create, um, especially if you have that early successional thing, uh, uh, component on your property, or you're going to create it. Um, it's like on Cody's property, it's, it's all brand new, so we'll create a, a drum and log site, and it's mostly for the future, because once that early successional high stem density come, that will be that good quality cover that will protect the grouse for, you know, when they do their drumming uh, ritual again. So 14, 15 on inches on up. Okay, this log right here is probably you know, 16, 17, 18 inches. I would, uh, would assume maybe even bigger. Um, this thing is, has seen a lot, of, a lot of time. It's getting rotten, but it still has a lot of life left. And yeah, basically a rough grouse jumps on this thing. And base, what they do is they, they kind of strut a little bit. It's really neat. 
and then they'll suck their wings in and they'll make this beating sound to attract the females. And that's what happens. And they do this from, you know, depending on where you live, um, you know, March, April into May. Some people have heard grouse even drum into a little bit of June. So that's what they're trying to do is track the females for breeding. But when I was sitting there, it's it, it, watching this rough grouse that we're, we're showing you, you know, <clears throat> it was very special. It was something that, um, you know, you can't appreciate. You can watch it on TV, you can watch it on video. You can hear people talk about it, but until you actually see it, it I got a little emotional, um, especially as I get older, I get <laughs> emotional about everything. But no, I was, it was so unfortunate and I got angry because I was sitting there knowing we, ha we know more about wildlife management today than probably ever before. There's so much information at the tip of our finger and a lot of good information out there. But yet here's a species sitting or standing on this log doing its thing and I was watching a dinosaur and for those I wish I could take every person sit in this blind come breeding season for the grouse and show them that it is more about white-tailed deer it is more than about the wild turkey population it is more about waterfowl this bird is the I mean it is, it represents forest management. It represents so much. When you have grouse, that just lets you know that everything is how it's supposed to be. The bellwether, they call it. And um, yeah, it just, uh, I don't know the grouse that lives here and does his thing, how many more years it has left in them. Uh, the habitat here is sufficient, but the times that I sat in a blind filming this rough grouse, the ladies never came. So I don't know if he was successful or not, but uh, let's hope that he did because the habitat on this property here is of high quality. It just needs some birds. And since they don't migrate, fly around looking for early successional, we'll see. We'll see, we'll hope and hopefully that this, this log can help support a rough grouse once again after this, this guy decides it's, it's time to go. So. But yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, I hope when you watch, you get to, to experience what I, what I got to experience, so. But yeah, rough grouse management, it's not that difficult to create these things. Do a little research on your own. There's even people going out there and putting artificial, they're making, using, like I said, Cody and I talk about all the time, don't let your limitations limit you on doing good wildlife management. There's people out there, I was looking on the internet the other day and they were making artificial out of like uh, indoor outdoor carpet of all things and sitting, placing these things in early successional type habitat and or the correct habitat and they, they actually work. They had the camera pictures to show that they do work. So if you don't ha have the perfect tree to set up a drum log site, don't let that stop you. But yeah, the, there's something to, again, if you want to help sustain the rough grouse and you have rough grouse in your area, yeah, you can do good quality habitat, but don't forget the old drum and log sites. It's something that's really fun. And especially if they utilize these logs that you created, set up a blind and see for yourself how <laughs> incredible this experience is. Bring your kids, bring your friend, whoever, and um, experience it. But. Um, yeah, there's so much that we can do for wildlife. But with that being said, as it is for me, and I'm sure it is for you, wildlife, it's our way of life.